Well hello again, it's Trudy here from Hot Patterns and I have for you another lovely little tutorial and obviously a look at the finished piece. This is for one of our fast and fabulous pieces. This is the Cool Box, but I should say it again, Cool Box Clutch. Uh, we call it Cool Box because it's kind of cool and it's like a box construction so work with me on that. Um, it's a really really simple clutch to make, you'll see me making it in a leopard print uh, twill. Um, I made it in leopard print partly because, well, if you look on Pinterest or any magazines at the moment, leopard print clutches are everywhere. And of course I thought, well, I think we should have one, don't you? So that's what we've got. Um, so there's a few things just to quickly tell you about before I show you the beautiful finished item. The first one is that uh, it is very easy to make. It's really just flat pieces seamed together. Um, the tricky bit, as always, with any kind of bag, are the pockets on the inside. You don't have to do them if you don't want to, but honestly, a clutch with plot pockets is much, much more useful for you so it's really your choice uh, the other thing to tell you of course is that you can choose what kind of fabric you want to make it in uh, real or faux suede leather short hair uh, furs whatever uh, the normal home deck fabrics cotton brocade all that kind of stuff really it's up to you and it's up to you how firm you want to make it the one I, you're going to see me making I've made very very firm interfacing because I want it to literally stand upon its own and it does and the final thing to tell you about this before I get on to showing you the actual uh, piece is it's coming in our brand new super fabulous <gasps> small envelopes oh, I know uh, these are brilliant these are so good uh, clever Jeremy has managed to retool so that we can now start printing in smaller envelopes this is brilliant this is huge for us because uh, you still get the same pattern on the same paper of course but because we can get them into smaller envelopes it means we can keep the prices lower because the shipping isn't so hideously hideously expensive so a uh, good thing all round, easier to store, uh, they'll still come to you, like I say, on the same paper. Good thing all round, so smaller envelopes, still same fast and fabulous pieces. Would you like to see the clutch? Of course you would, let me show you. Um, this is it. I know, it's so fab. So you can see leopard print, uh, I've cunningly centred it all up. This has got a front carry strap. Um, I've put some little kind of tags on the pulls there just because I can, you don't have to. Um, it's zippered all the way around. It's got the usual zippered pocket, uh, foam pocket and small pocket on the inside. You'll see me make them and I'll talk you through how to make it to, uh, as well. Now this one, you know, it's in the fast and fabulous range so it's not going to take you a long time to make. Um, I would say it probably took me, including cutting, maybe two and a half, maybe three hours because I was fiddling around with interfacing and kind of making sure I got the right one. Um, so yeah, it's really not a long one, it's really not a complex one, you're going to love it and if you use a firm interface like this, it does stand up on its own. Let's start our tutorial by quickly looking at the pieces. There are really not that many pieces, we've got the outer shell of the bag, which has got very few, and then we've got the lining which has got a few more. So, this is your basic shape of your clutch bag. This is the bottom, sides here, top edge, side again. Next you've got this little cut out here, this is what gives you the box shape at the bottom. Uh, we've got our front carry strap, like that, interfaced already. I should briefly tell you the interfacing I'm using here. You can see it's really rigid. Um, it's by Pellon. I couldn't tell you the quality because Joanne's couldn't tell me the quality either, but I do know that it's the one they sell for using in curtain valances. It's incredibly firm, so it's really good for this. So that's your basic uh, clutch shape. You do have two small side pieces, which I haven't actually cut out yet. I've interfaced them. They're that size. They're tiny, and they go here with the zipper attached to them there. And I haven't cut them out for a reason. I'll show you shortly. So that's your basic clutch. Now, the other things to look at are the clutch lining. You see it's the same, see, prepare, ooh. Um, it's the same shape as the clutch. The difference being here is you've got your small and uh, cell phone pockets going to be on one side. Your larger zipper pocket will be on the other side. And I have yet to decide if I'm going to uh, bind the edges of the pocket with cell fabric or bind them with the leopard or what. I don't know yet, so we'll see how things move on. But that's basically it. Your um, lining does not need to be interfaced. This I'm using um, a really nice faux suede. It's just like a creamy colour. Um, I don't know if you've ever looked inside a really high-end handbag. They tend to be lined in a very, very uh, kind of chamois colour suede. So I've kind of uh, echoed that with this. So that's the innards, that's the outers, and now we're going to proceed by starting with doing the lining. You have to do the lining first. No way around it. If you don't do the lining first, you can't proceed with making your clutch. 
I'm now going to start putting together my lining. My lining is basically one piece with two pockets. Kind of simple. Uh, one of the pockets has a zipper, and I'm going to use this vintage zipper that I discovered in my stack. I've got a lot of old zippers in there, mainly because it's a really, really nice colour, and mainly because I really like it. It's one of those kind of delicate nylon ones. It's really nice. So it's going to be really, really good for the um, zippered pocket here. It's a little shorter than I would normally use, but I'll show you how I get around that in a moment. Um, and then, as I said previously, I'm kind of humming and hawing over how to edge the top of this um, cell phone and small pocket. When it's done, you're gonna have like a pleated bit here, pleated bit there to accommodate the cell phone pocket, and the rest just sits there. So do we edge it with this? Do we edge it with that? Hmm, I don't know. I'm gonna say, we're gonna try it with the faux suede and see how that works out. You never know. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to pin up what I need to do. I'm gonna pin up my, or I'm gonna actually sew a part of this seam together. I'm gonna pin this up and get it ready and show you the bits before we start actually sewing things. So um, I started by preparing my pockets for my lining and the first one I'm doing is the zippered pocket, just because that's what I'm doing, no other reason. Um, and what I've done is I have sewn the uh, top and bottom together, leaving this opening here. You can see that that's where the zip is going to go. And I've pressed the seams open on the back like this. Now, if you were using a normal lining, I'd have you base together that opening before you pressed it so you've got a really nice edge. But this is a faux suede, and the thing with faux suede and faux leather, just like real suede and leather, is once you put a needle or a pin into it, you've got a hole. The hole's not going to go away, it's not going to heal up. So I avoid wherever possible pinning this stuff wherever I can and when I have to hold things together I use things like this masking tape you know that you use with your painting walks it's paper and you can kind of fiddle around with it much easier you can sew through it as well if you want just rip it off it's really easy so got this done and now I have to center my lovely zipper up behind it so what I'm going to do is plop it down on the right the right sides facing me and just kind of decide where it needs to be it needs to be kind of I'm going to say kind of there and then kind of slide it in now I'm going to centre it up, I will show you this close up in a moment, I'm going to centre it up so that each edge of the coil is right up against the seam. So let me do that and tape it across the back because there's no point you seeing me fiddle around with this and I'll bring it right up close so you can see how it should look. Now once I have uh, taped the zipper to it, this is what the front looks like, so it's still got a nice kind of neat opening. Uh, the zipper pull is at this side, there it is there. On the back, sadly, <laughs> it looks like a really bad kind of DIY project, but that's okay. The tape's gonna hold it while I sew it. Now here's how you do it. Um, when you're sewing it, and I'm doing this without the machine in the way so you can see what I'm doing, your big bit of fabric's gonna be on this side and your uh, needle's gonna go down here. As you sew it, go through here, and as it gets to the bit you're about to sew, just pull the tape away. You're going to end up holding with your fingers a little bit, kind of like that. That's perfectly okay. What you don't want to do is rush this. This is a one-hit uh, deal. You can just do it in one pass. But what you're going to do is you're going to sew basically a rectangle all the way around the zipper, as close to the zipper teeth as you can, but you have to get you know, right up near it. And the whole point of it is you have a nice, clean uh, zipper opening, and it's going to look really, really nice for the inside of your bag. Okay, so I have now sewn this on, and I know I should have kind of got Jerry to film me while I'm doing it, but I have to tell you, doing all this, I'm always very nervous. It's like, and just having a camera as well is too much. However, here is the result. We've got it sewn in, and here is it on the back with two pieces that I rather foolishly didn't pull out of the way. So let's see if we can just pull them away now, because I think we can. It's just paper tape, and the truth is, I could go in the washing machine or get rid of it, she says, hopefully. So it shouldn't be too traumatic. I mean, yeah, it comes up along the stitching, so... It's not too dreadful. Um, so I guess you could just, there you go, you could just sew right through the tape if you wanted to and not bother pulling off as you go. So that's the zipper on the uh, zipper pocket. Now, I have to go and press the zipper flat and then I have two choices to make and you also have the same choices to make. One is, do I just turn the um, edges in before I top stitch down or do I cut a piece of very lightweight lining and kind of bag this out to make it a lined, a lined piece to go on there? I don't know. I think I'm going to turn it. I'm not sure. Uh, when we come back, we'll see what I've decided. Um, okay, so I've gone away and pressed the um, zipper opening flat, which all looks very nice, and I decided to turn in the edges, um, and I'll show you that very, very briefly, but let me explain to you how I did it. Um, and I've done this before, I've done this on the kimono jacket pockets, it's a really good uh, method to do it. And what you do is this, let me show you on this piece because it's just easier. 
Uh, if you need to turn in your edges, what you do is you either turn them up like that or in like that, doesn't really matter which. And you sew your seam allowance just from the folded edge to here. Do it on both sides, clip the corners and turn it out. And what you find like this is that the seams have absolutely no choice but to behave themselves, do what you want them to do, and just slip in. So they do that, and I've pressed them, so yay, zipper pocket, done. Zipper pocket has to go now onto the um, lining, but I'm gonna do those the, the two pockets going on together. Um, so now I'm gonna prepare the smaller um, cell phone and open pocket for you. Okay, so in order to uh, complete my uh, cell phone small pocket, I've decided to uh, bind the top edge. So what I've done is I've sewn it on the uh, right side of the binding, the furry side, the swaby side of the binding, to the wrong side of the um, pocket. And then I've graded down, or I've trimmed down the seam allowances, it's going to get bulky otherwise. And here is what I'm going to do. I'm going to basically just fold it over like this, and I'm going to stitch along here, right by the edge. Do you not see the stitching? That's perfectly fine. That's my top edge finished and then I'll show you what I mean when I say that you fold the bits in and kind of do the little stitchy thing to give you a nice sharp corner. There's my binded edge looking rather lovely and so now I'm going to do the bit where I turn the edges in and because I've bound this edge I can't do it that way. It's not going to work but I am going to do it this way. So I'm going to turn this up, I'm going to do my little stitch bits here and then I will show you how it looks because you can just clip it and turn it out. So hold on a second. Okay, so this is what I've done. Folded it up and stitched it from the folded edge down to here. I've done the same on this other edge. I'm gonna clip the corners off and turn them out and I'll show you what it looks like. That's what I mean by clipping the corners off. See, it's diagonal. And then when you turn it out, it looks like this on the inside. Now I haven't pressed that, I've just turned it, but you've still got a nice kind of sharp uh, angle there, really nice and square. That's what you want. And now you can see that I'm back to kind of my little crafty project here with lots of masking tape. Of course, if you are using a, a normal lining, a woven lining, you go ahead and pin. You're not stuck in the masking tape hell that I am at the moment. So I am basically ready to, to apply my um, interior pockets. Uh, this is the large zippered one, and I've just laid this down, obviously with the um, edges fo uh, folded and pressed under, and I've kind of taped it there and all the corners. And when you sew it, you're going to kind of just, you know, make sure it's all straight, it's all sitting as it should, and it's really a matter of eyeballing it and making sure it sits properly. So that's that one, that's kind of easy, that's just a straight round, no problem. This one's slightly more interesting, not particularly complex, you just need to know what you're doing. So, I've put this down, and I'm gonna be sewing, I'm gonna start at the top here, down to the bottom of the pocket, along here, and I'm gonna stop there, I put this and there, there, for a reason. I'm gonna sew up this line here, at the top, and then I'm gonna sew a line on this edge all the way down, leaving this bottom bit free, because that's the bit that holds the cell phone, and that ends up having a pleat, I'll show you at the top edge, kind of pleats there like that, but I need to do those lines and that one halfway across the bottom before I can do that one. So I'm gonna go and uh, do this one, and I'll show you what it looks like before we do the bottom, and of course that's just all the way around. So I have um, I fought the good fight with the suede, the faux suede, and I have won because it is not the boss of me. I am the boss of this fabric. Oh yes. So I have stitched on the um, large zipper pocket. There it is, zipping quite merrily. Uh, but that was easy-ish uh, because it's just flat sewing. This is the one that's uh, kind of more interesting. Now what I did was I sewed down here, along here, and up here. It's very difficult to sew through all this binding. It's very, very thick. That's okay. I may go in later and do it by hand. I may just leave it because I kind of backstitched the top of those. And I also sewed this line here. So now we've just got this bit to do. And this is the bit that's kind of key because you've got to have that excess to sort of pleat it so you've got room for your cell phone to pop in. That's what I'm going to do. And I'm just going to top stitch through all the layers. Um, obviously, I'm going to use my trusty masking tape to hold it in place um, straight across the bottom. And that's the uh, cell phone pocket uh, completed and small pockets. And then once we've done that, I will obviously show you what it looks like, but we're ready to kind of go ahead and do the rest of the clutch. And now I've completed my lovely clutch lining. Um, you'll see I have cunningly put a kind of an extra pull on the end of my zipper. Um, I just did that by using a little scrap of the uh, faux suede binding that I used here and kind of sewing through all thicknesses and use it as uh, like a piece of ribbon or something just through the end of the um, zipper pull and then sew across here to keep it there. So that's that. That opens nicely. Nice little pocket. Cell phone pocket. Baby pocket. And now I'm going to put this to one side but just for a moment. I have to prepare two things now which means I can then go ahead and just put it all together. One is the um, 
for a pair of, of the side pieces. Uh, I need to do the front strap and I need to join the side pieces to the zipper. And I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with the zipper shortly because although this pattern calls for a double pull purse zipper, that's the ones that open from the middle with two purse sliders, they're not always available. They're not always available in the colours you want. So I'm going to show you how to take two ordinary zippers and join them and use them as if they were a double purse zipper. And in fact, let's do that now. Now we get to the part of our clutch that is the, um, the really the only mildly complex bit. Well, it's not even complex. You just have to be a bit neat with it because this is the bit that you see. This is the zipper closure that runs up the sides and along the top of your clutch. Um, now the pattern calls for a 28 inch double ended purse zipper, which means that the zipper is 28 inches and it has two pulls and they open from the center outwards like this. Um, now they're relatively easy to get when I mean, you can get them in craft stores, you can order them online, but the one thing about them is this, they don't come in a huge range of colors. So it may well be either that you haven't got time to go and buy a purse zipper, you've got a load of other zippers you'd rather use, or you've got one that matches your uh, fabric perfectly, in which case here is what you do. You take a pair of zippers. When I say a pair, I mean they match. You can't just have a red metal one and a red plastic one. That's not going to work. They need to be the same. I recommend you use the more heavy duty ones, either a plastic one or a metal one, just because it's for a bag and you get a bit more oomph like that. And these ones were actually very, very long. They were super long, so I chopped them off. I kind of sewed across the bottom here and I chopped them off. So that's going to give me the correct length. And what we're going to do is we're going to join them here at the opening part and the best way to do it is this is to open them a little bit and then put them right sides to right sides and you need to match them all up so they meet perfectly and we're going to stitch through there now you may think oh well, we're going to have a gap at the top you are but you do with a purse zipper anywhere a double ended purse zipper there is it's about half an inch gap at the top that's normal so you can get your hand and kind of actually you know use the zippers so i'm going to join them i'm going to join both sides of these and then I'm going to show you how I uh, fix the bits of tape on the back. Okay, I have joined my two zippers. I'm going to come right at the moment to the camera and show you the rear side of this so you can see what I've done. What I basically did was I just joined them kind of right side of the zipper to right side of the zipper straight across and I opened them first. That's kind of key. I find it a lot easier. Um, and just to be sure I got them all the even size, I pinned like a crazy person. And then I trimmed back and I top stitched down the um, seam allowance on the back. I'm going to come up and show you it right now. Now, I did the uh, bobbin thread. I kept it in cream so you could see this. See, I've flattened the uh, seam allowances there and I've just top stitched them down. So on the front, it looks like this. You don't see any stitching. So you have got a little opening here. This is perfectly normal for a purse zipper. Nothing to worry about at all. That's what it looks like there. And that's what we're going to use at the top of our clutch. Um, now we get to the part where we're going to join the side pieces, which is this little tiny, tiny weeny bit. Um, to the bottom of the zipper. And that kind of makes a big long strip which uh, just holds the front and the back together. Now, if you were doing just normal fabric, just fabric and lining and stuff, you'd cut them out of this and you'd just sew it like you normally would. But I'm not, I'm using that faux suede lining. So I thought I'd do it a slightly different way and I'd show you, I'd show you what I mean and I'll show you why as well. The other reason of course is I've got this um, shortened zipper so the end's a bit kind of unpleasant looking. So what I'm doing is this, I'm sandwiching it together and you can see I haven't actually cut the pieces out, I've just cut a chunk of each fabric. There's my fabric and there's my lining. Um, and I've sandwiched this together right sides to right side with the um, zipper between them. And I'm going to be sewing across the bottom here and what I will end up with is that okay a nice neat piece on the outside I will also have a neat edge on the inside and then of course I'll trim off down here so it matches up with the zipper now there's one thing that you need to bear in mind which is this this is a big chunky zipper the needle is not going to go through it at least I hope it isn't um, so what I'm going to end up doing is sewing across here and stopping by the zipper and across here and stopping by the zipper so the actual zipper you're not going to sew through it doesn't matter you cannot pull the zipper pull further than this stitching here that shortens it so it's all okay this is really a matter of making of kind of fiddling around with a zipper that isn't meant to be used for it so I'm going to do that I'm going to do it on both of them I'm going to show you how it comes out and how it comes out when it's trimmed up too okay so I've now done uh, both ends of the zipper I'm going to show you what that looks like see what I mean we go over there we miss a bit and we go over there so this is it sandwiched together and we're going to pull it out like that and when we've done it here's what it looks like that's when it's done and trimmed. That's the outside, 
and that's the inside and this is all clean finished and I know whenever I do stuff like this and I show the camera Jeremy's behind me go oh really like yes really uh, because this is a nice kind of way of making sure you've got nice clean edges inside and your zipper end is all tidied away now I have very very simple choices here I can either leave this raw because the suede isn't going to fray, that's for sure, but the fabric is. So I'm actually going to probably bind it with some of the, the faux suede binding, but not the bottom edge, just the sides, just those for the moment. So I'm going to do that, and then we have to do the um, handle of the uh, clutch that goes in the front of the clutch. And then it's all ready to be assembled, the um, lining onto the clutch, this onto it, kind of done really, so not too tricky at all. Okay, so this is going to be our handle, and it's really kind of a front strap. Uh, it's not really so much you to lift it up by, more to kind of put your hand through to kind of just, you know, hold it in the right position you're holding it. Um, this has been interfaced, of course, with this very, very firm interfacing. The jewelry's still out on whether this will actually work or not. Who knows? However, here's what we're going to do. We're going to fold it in half lengthways like this, and we're going to stitch from the ends to about here, leaving about three inches open on this one. This is really important. And then we're gonna squish it flat. See, it's very, very ugh, difficult to do it. And sew it on the short ends. I'm gonna show you in process and you'll see what I mean. So when you've sewn it together, you've got your opening along here like this. You have to squish it flat. And we're gonna sew these short ends, this one, and this one, obviously clip the corners and turn it out. It's going to be a tricky one because this interface is very, very firm, but I will persevere. And now, of course, uh, having said that I will not be beaten by a handle and it is not the boss of me, I'm now sitting here, I should be eating a large slice of humble pie because apparently the handle is the boss of me. I couldn't get it turned out. And so, but this is kind of quite a useful thing to show you. Sometimes, because the uh, interfacing is so heavy, you can't always turn things out. So you have to kind of go back to plan B. And I'm actually going to put this uh, different pattern piece in the envelope as well, in case you are using a very firm interfacing. Here's what I've had to do. I've had to do it as one long strip. And I've cut my interfacing to the side, the depth of my handle twice, plus uh, seam allowances. You can just cut a strip. As long as your strip is even, top and bottom, you're good. And then I've obviously fused it onto my fabric. And on this side, I've glued down the um, seam allowance, just really with just some like glue stick, just to hold it, because I just don't want to pin it. I'm going to do the other one. I just left it there so you can see it. I'm going to do that one. And then I will show you what I will do. Because the key with this handle is it's got to have a perfect rectangular finish. You can't have like corners going off. It will look really nasty. So the whole point of it is to have it slick, slick, slick. So when I've um, glued this down, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to fold it in, do one seam, and then flatten it. And that's going to be it. So I'm going to go and do that, and then I'll show you. Okay, so there, by the magic of uh, Elmer's glue stick, we have our uh, handle ready to be folded up and stitched. Here's what I'm going to do. This is the right side. Clearly, that's the wrong side. I'm going to fold it in half like this and stitch across here and obviously press it open. And then it's going to be turned out and flattened so this seam is in the center at the back. When I've done that, I'm going to show you how it looks and I'm going to show you as well uh, the stitching I'm going to do. It's dead easy, a little bit of top stitching and the handle's ready to go onto the bag. Okay, by the power of modern technology, we now have a handle. That is it before it's stitched. You can see we've got the uh, center back seam that I've clipped away a little bit at the seam allowances just to give myself a fighting chance of getting the top stitching done. Now, you can't see on here because we've got a very printed fabric and I've only marked very lightly, but on the pattern, there are very clear markings for how long your top stitching should be, where it should start and finish on your handles. And you need to do that first before it's attached to the, um, the bag. When it's attached to the bag, you're going to kind of continue on the row of top stitching into a square shape here. But the whole point is you do the top and bottom rows of it first and it's ready to go on. So I'm going to do those and then I'll show you how you position it on the bag front. So now finally I've got the handle done, I'm so pleased, can't tell you. So um, that's how it is, very, very rigid, and there's the seam at the back, and we've got a little line of top stitching here. So it's certainly, you know, sturdy enough to hold it by, not that you hold a clutch by this, but you're going to put your hand through it. And once again, you can't see, but I can, I've got my markings. These are markings that are on the pattern, they're very clear. They say, these are the strap markings, mark them on the fabric side only, not the lining. So you're going to plop them down. And you can see I've cunningly matched my uh, leopard print because that's how I roll. Um, and what you're going to do is basically sew along here, up here, along there, and down there, a square on each side to complete it. You need to be joining up with your top stitching here, so it's easy peasy to do. Um, in order to do that, I'm actually going to put a little roll of tape 
behind the candle hold it in place it's so stiff now you can't get a pin there so sticky side outside like this to make a roll that sticks all the way around and just plop it on there and then you can position it where you want to and it'll stay where you put it are you impressed? Are you very impressed? I'm very impressed. impressed. Are you impressed as well, Jeremy? I am. I'm very pleased to hear it. Okay, so I'm going to do my little squares around there, and that's the, the basic front of it done and ready to put the whole bits and pieces together. So, yay! Handle is on. There it is. There's your handle. And obviously, it's just to slip your hand in, but that works really well, and it sits there nice and rigidly. Now, I'm pretty sure that the top stitching would not pass muster at uh, Hermé or Louis Vuitton, but I don't really care. It's actually nice and straight and really, really good. So, now this is the basic um, shape of the clutch ready to go. I'm going to do one last thing with the lining I want to show you, and this is really an optional thing, but I tend to do it on most of my bags just to give them a really firm sort of bottom because. <sighs> Who wants a saggy bottom on their clutch, really? Um, so what I normally do is I use plastic tapestry canvas. And I've done this bit here, and there is a pattern for this in the, um, there's a pattern piece for this in the pattern. Um, and it's basically, can you see that shape? Mm -hmm. That shape there, that kind of um, rounded off rectangle. And I've just kind of put some tape on there. And it basically sits inside the seam allowances. A good, I'm going to say a good mm, quarter of an inch-ish inside the seam allowances. I'm going to just stitch this on all the way around here. You'll only see the stitching on the um, lining. And then I'm going to baste the lining to the clutch, wrong sides together. I'll show you what that looks like when it's done. Alrighty, so I've now basted my lining to the body of my clutch. Now, here's a couple of tips for you. First of all, this fusing, this interfacing is very, very rigid. It does not distort. It's kind of like a brick, to be honest with you, but that's a good thing for a bag like this. Your lining, of course, being a more fabric-y type uh, piece, it does distort. It kind of twists a little bit. That's okay. Um, you want to follow the interface and that's the bit that never changes that's the bit to go by and the nice thing about this is I've kind of had to pull it quite taut to get it to the edge the lining I mean but that means that when you fold it up like this which is how it's going to be ooh, lovely um, it kind of all sits together nicely so we've got two more things to do before it's finished both pretty easy things to do the first thing to do is to add our zipper strip with our fabric pieces on the end that's where that fabric piece is going to be when it's finished so what you want to do is this you find your center lucky for me I've centered it up here I and mean, I've put a little notch but that's that and oh yes I've put my little fabric pulls on my um, zippers and you pin it in so you pin it all the way around there's a notch on the side here that has to match up to this so you do that on both sides and then sew the zipper in. When you've sewn one end of the zipper in, one side of the zipper in, you're going to find it easy when you sew the next one to undo the zippers. Trust me on this, otherwise you'll have this really tight little kind of tube of fabric to sew. And you're battling it with the interfacing. So, put your zipper in all the way around here, and I will show you when I put in one side of the zipper, how it looks, and then I'll show you when I put in both sides, and then you've just got one little twiddly bit to finish. Okay, so now I have wrestled quite merrily with the zipper and the clutch. It's actually not that hard to do because it's just one complete pass. Just bear in mind that you are dealing with lots of interfacing and it's quite stiff. So just take your time. Um, I've used a three, number three stitch, which is kind of, you know, medium big, not massive. But anyway, so um, I basically just run it around the edge. That's the one side of it. Now, at this point, you have to make an executive decision. Are you going to top stitch along the edge? Are you not? I probably am. I just want it to kind of pull down really, really well. Um, but because the, um, I'll just give it the other side so you can see it, um, I'll end up top stitching it like that, which means what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and, and trim off as much as I can of the innards there so that the, um, when the zipper is top stitched down, it's kind of all tucked away and it's all nice and neat. So I'm going to do that first. I've done one side of the zipper, top stitch it. I'll go back and do the other side of the zipper and you do that by opening them like this because otherwise life's going to be a bit tricky uh, it'd be much easier that way and top stitch there and then we're ready for the last bit it's two little stitch seams pulls the whole thing together okay so i've um put the zipper on both sides and i actually did a little bit of top stitching and i decided i wasn't going to do it i didn't really like how it looked um, but that's all okay and i have to make a decision here on how i'm going to finish these edges i could use pinking shears i could overlock them i could bind them i could just trim them off and leave them I'm not sure what i'm going to do yet but in order to finish this so you can see it i'm going to just leave that for a moment i'll come back to it now here are the bits at the side you've still got a hole at the bottom Okay, two holes like that. And this is how you finish it. You basically flatten this like this. Okay, see that? And you just sew 
right across there with the sound effect clearly uh, straight across there clip your uh, seam allowances and turn it out and there you'll get your box shape so that's how you finish it with those two short seams so I'm going to do that uh, on the basis that I'll go in and trim off the um, inside edge of the zipper later and I'll turn it out and show you how it looks <laughs>